Acts 2, from verse 22 it reads, Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Then he goes on to quote from the Psalms, pointing to the resurrection of the Messiah. Then he continues and explains this uh, prophecy to his hearers. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. Again, how does this fit Islam? I don't know. But if Sam is going to appeal to what the first believers believe by quoting from Acts 2 verse 23, he has to account for everything that Peter said and the first disciples believed from this text. And so much for Paul, by the way, coming in and corrupting their message. This was way before Paul even met the disciples to begin with. Now here is Acts 3 that Sami quoted too. From verse 13, The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our forefathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One, and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life. But God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. How on earth does all this confirm Sammy's position? Verse 15 calls this mere prophet the author of life. What prophet is the source of all life according to Islam? None! Muslims don't even think their arguments through before they raise them. It is again clear that Sami throws out things and hope they stick. The very text he quoted to prove his point destroyed his entire argument. Point number 25. Jesus is called the first and the last, etc., etc. The mighty God. Um, well, pagan kings were also called the mighty God. The exact same phrase in Ezekiel chapter 31, verse 11. In Ezekiel chapter 32, verse 12. In Nehemiah, Chapter 9, verse 27. Titles of God are given to men. Savior. In Ezra, chapter 7, verse 12. A king is called the king of kings. In Ezekiel, chapter 26, verse 7. Another pagan king is called king of kings. Daniel, chapter 2, verse 37. Thou, O king, are a king of kings. Many men in the Bible are given titles of God. Moses himself was called God. Bogus. No one is called Mighty God in the Tanakh. No one. Sami gives us the references where supposedly people are called El Gibor, Mighty God. Let's look at these texts and see how Sami just makes arguments up and again hopes no one checks them out. Ezekiel 3 verse 11. I do even deliver him into the hand of the Mighty One, Eil of the nations. No El Gibor here. Ezekiel 32, verse 12. By the swords of the mighty, Giborim, will I cause your multitude to fall. No El Gibor here. And Nehemiah 9, verse 27, has nothing where Gibor is raised. So, there is just nothing in these texts that substantiate anything Sammy has claimed. 
people get called Gibor or the Mighty all the time. But none of these texts call anyone El Gibor, Mighty God. The phrase El Gibor only appears twice in the Tanakh, namely Isaiah 9 and Isaiah 10. The first refers to the child that was to be born, the second to the God of Israel. So Sammy makes things up. There is nothing there that called anyone Mighty God. And that's exactly what he claimed. Again, only to look good, because it is not there. Yes, people get called names that are also used for God, but there are limits. Anyone can be called Savior, because God raises a lot of Saviors. Anyone can be called King of Kings, because there are a lot of Kings, and that particular one might be the highest of all those Kings. But no one can be called the first and the last, the author of life, the truth, the life, the resurrection, a lord of the Shabbat, greater than the temple, judge of mankind, the beginning of God's creation. And when a person is addressed as my Lord and my God, that person can do nothing but to rebuke the one who says this. He cannot bless such a statement, which is exactly what Yeshua does, which again testifies that he is not just a mere human prophet refuting the Islamic claims about him. Point number 26. And then he says, Jesus was worshipped. Well, did Jesus teach you to worship him? In Mark 11, chapter 25 to 26. And when you stand praying, what do you say? Do you stand and pray to me? If you have aught against any, that your father, which is in heaven, may forgive you. When you pray, you're praying to your father. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. And in this manner pray. This is how he's teaching him to pray. This is how you pray. Our Father which is in heaven. Case closed. He taught you to pray to Him. He's saying pray to the Father, not to Himself. It's getting pretty tiring to deal with these selective sightings of verses that Sami has to resort to all the time. Uh, Yeshua told people to pray not only to the Father, but to Him as well. In John 14, we find the following. Truly, truly, I say to you, He who believes in Me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. And how do you ask the Son anything when he is with the Father? Through prayer. The Son tells us that we can ask him things in his name through prayer. Again, do you see any Islamic teaching here? How does this correspond with anything Islam teaches of their Asa? Not. Point number 27. And then he brings up the point, well, the Jews accused Jesus, not the Jews. The Pharisees make a distinction between them. Now, of course, the Pharisees wanted Jesus dead. And Jesus answers why they wanted him dead in chapter John, verse 7-7. Seven, seven. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify it that they work evil. Notice what Jesus said. He says they hate me because I testify against their evil. And the Pharisees were the most evil. They had the power and the money. Jesus was exposing them. He was getting rid of their power for their hypocrisy. These same Pharisees made their own traditions. Isn't it ironic? Dr. White claimed that these Pharisees went to the Bible. The same Pharisees who had their own Bible, who had their own man-made tradition in Mark chapter 7 verse 13. This is what Jesus said to them. You make the word of God nothing through your tradition. So how are you going to appeal to a Pharisee who tries to appeal to the Bible when Jesus himself says you don't even use the Bible but your own man-made traditions? Then Sami goes to discredit the Pharisaic testimony as if it doesn't count. Well, that is terribly wrong. Since the authors of the Gospels clarify to us when someone misunderstands or correctly understands the words of the Messiah, that testimony cannot be dismissed. It gives an insight to the teachings, standards, and beliefs of that time. So when the Pharisees picked up stones to stone him, they did so for a reason. And since the authors then explain to us what happened, 
there is no reason to brush the pharisaic testimony aside and by the way they didn't declare him to be god they accused him of making blasphemous statements but isn't it ironic earlier on sammy was appealing to the jewish understanding of sonship but now he repudiates the same jewish understanding of the sacred texts because they destroy his case the inconsistency is staggering but this is again what muslims have to do otherwise islam's banner falls